what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of inspiredinsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And this is also going to be part of the Giants of Direct Response series. And I'm going to introduce Kevin Donlin in a second. Before I do, Kevin, I always like to point out other episodes people should ch- check out of the podcast. And who are some of the other cool copywriters, direct response marketers on the planet? So you can check out the interview I did with Brian Kurtz, who wrote Over Deliver, who Kevin knows, Perry Marshall, who wrote 8020 Sales and Marketing, Ron Popeil, um, who's the godfather of infomercials. Unfortunately, he passed away recently, but in so many more. So check out inspiredinsider.com. Kevin, any favorites for you of your favorite direct response marketers, people you've learned from? I like all those guys. Perry's terrific. Um, Ron Popeil was a giant. Brian's super, super generous guy. Yeah, the, I, I, I would rank them pretty highly, all of them. I think uh, one of my early favorites and enduring favorites is Jay Abraham. Mm. Um, he's, uh, <laughs> he's, when he does a cartwheel, it sounds like a stack of books falling over because he's got so much uh, knowledge in his head. And uh, no, he, he and Dan Kennedy are two big influences on yeah. me, but I could go on. We don't have time for my influence. Yeah, so no, I, I love it because it's, you know, selfishly, I ask because I like to go follow and read the the materials of maybe people I don't know or maybe you know you recommend. So I'm I'm open ears. Keep keep going. Like, who are some yeah. of your favorites? Well, it's too bad we lost Joe Sugarman recently. Um, he was uh, incredible. It's always I'm I'm a big fan of the guys who came up on their own uh, and, and and really had to scramble. And he you know he had a background in the military, uh, just like Joe Carbo, by the way. Uh, Joe Carbo is another giant. They came out of the the military, and bam, they built incredible businesses. They did. Joe had like an e or Joe Sugar when I did interview. He he's amazing pioneer. One eight hundred number. Yeah. I have some Batman credit cards to prove <laughs> that I've met him. Um, but Joe Carbo, he had um a book, right? What what was he? Tell me more the about Man's Joe. Way to Riches. Yes, that's the book. Um, one of the he wrote some fantastic print ads. Joe Carbo did. But like all great copywriters, um, he had a, he started off in sales. He was just a genius at sales. Very smart guy. Um, and he, uh, he got his start in, in business after World War II, um, selling surplus uh, cardboard boxes. I believe it was in Chicago, actually. I uh, can't recall. Joe is also in Chicago. I met him yeah, first time in Chicago. Rain wattage in the Windy City. Uh, just saying not kissing up, but <laughs> I want to, um, you know, open a loop here for people, because what sure. we're going to talk about is some amazing case studies um, that Kevin has done. He's been in the trenches for decades. One of them we're going to talk about how do you grow, how he helped a client grow revenue to a hundred million dollars with direct mail. And he's going to walk us through some of the stuff he did. So, um, and then, you know, he's done this stuff like triple people's pipeline and SAS. And so we're going to, share some of these things that he's done. And also, um, I want to talk about your um, new for, you know, your client cloning kit that you can get, but I'll I'll formally introduce you in a second. Before we get to that, this episode is brought to you by Rise 25 and at Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships. And how do we do that? We help you run your podcast. You know, for me, Kevin, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships and profile the people and companies I admire on this planet. And so I found no better way to do that over the past decade than to profile them on my podcast. So if you have a business, I believe you should have a podcast. If you've thought about it, go to rise25.com. Feel free to email us. Both John and I, my business partner, have been doing it for over a decade now. So we know a thing or two. Feel free to ask us any questions that you want. Today, we have Kevin Donlin. He's founder of Client Cloning Systems. You can check it out at clientclonningsystems.com. He's been involved in marketing since 1994. I don't want to age you too much, Kevin, but he sold one of the first eBooks online. How did he do it? There wasn't a Joe Sugarman 1-800 number credit card (laughs) at the time, but it was payable by check. You had to actually mail it to the post office, and that was 
the beginning of e-commerce and your e-commerce journey. And in the late 90s, he was webmaster for FedEx. People have probably heard of FedEx, where he worked with some of the pioneers of online marketing. And since 1998, he's been a copywriter, marketing advisor, delivering sales gains of more than $1 million on multiple occasions with direct mail and online marketing. He's been interviewed by ABC, CBS, NBC, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Times, Fortune Magazine, and many, many more. He's a co-author and author of five books on marketing, and he's a creator of Client Cloning Systems. So Kevin, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jeremy. It's going to be a fun talk uh, talking to you today. I'm like, where do I start here? I mean, I I geek out. uh, I think the foundation for everything is direct response, whether you're writing an email, whether you're trying to convince your spouse where to go to dinner, whether you are trying to sell something, it's direct response marketing. And so it's one of the most important skills that I have tried to learn over the years. So um, I would love to start with the client cloning kit. Okay. So um, talk about, and, and people can check it out on clientclonesystems.com. I geek out on lumpy mail also, you know, lumpy. like, yeah. <laughs> and I subscribe to Kevin's newsletter. I don't know if, if it's, that's available for people to do on your website, but I would encourage people to check it out so we can point people there, but talk about what the client cloning kit is and how you came up with it. So this is, um, yeah, this is the lumpy mail, uh, exemplified. It's a, it's a two, by the way, I have full disclosure you can get all these parts at, uh, what is the website? I'm blanking. It's not you hall. It's the you blank. Uh, it, it's that catalog that sells. I know exactly business. what you're talking about. Why am I blanking on it? My assistant puts the thing together, but it's a red, two red rubber caps, a clear plastic tube, and then uh, five little tools inside. I won't give away the game and tell you everything that's inside. You have to go to my website and request one. But it's really, it's my lead magnet. I've had it for over a decade. And it's uh, five tools that I put together, printed, and send to you in that tube to help you get more clients like your best clients. One of them, I can tell you, it's called the paper email. And it's basically, you're going to take um, any message that's working by email. If you print it and mail it to people, uh, it becomes a paper email. Is that a gimmick? Is that kooky sounding? Well, hold on. Uh, because anything that you make tangible and put in the hands of your prospects, it's going to increase your conversions. That's what matters. So a message that's working okay, or even really well, uh, by email is going to work supremely well uh, by U.S. mail or Canada Post if you're listening to this uh, north of the border. But uh, the paper email is just a way to get in touch with people who have been ignoring your emails. You can certainly call people, but a paper email, I've gotten them before. Um, I didn't invent it, but I, I may have given it that title. And I, I actually invented it out of desperation. I, was, I wasn't desperate. I wanted to make an impact. I had seen Seth Godin speak about 2008. Uh, might have been earlier, 2004. And I wanted to send him um, a thank you email because, you know, um, it was a really great talk. And I was about to hit the send button. I said, yeah, you know, he's going to get 100 emails this morning. Why don't I just print this thing and mail it? I was actually too lazy to write a thank you note. So I hit the print button and put a little post it note at the top of the email saying, hey, Seth, great talk today. And I found his address, his, his office put it in an envelope and mailed it. About a week later, I got a phone call from Seth. Um, So that was a response. I didn't even ask, but he called and said, hey, I wanted to thank you for the super nice note. I really appreciate it. Uh, We didn't get a chance to chat, actually. He left me a voicemail. And so that was cool. And I accidentally invented the paper email and it got response from one of the busiest, smartest people on earth. So I thought, well, maybe this will work with my prospects and clients. And it does work. So that's one of the things I share. I'm really big on tools. You know, you can try to change people's way of thinking or their way of doing things, but if you give them tools to help them make that change on their own, then you don't have to struggle so much and you just give them the tool. And so this is one of the five tools inside the client cloning kit. And I'm happy to share it with people. And again, I send this, you know, if you get this in the mail, you can't ignore it. If you try to put mail on top of it, it falls off. You have to deal with this right away when it arrives it's only for people in in the u.s i can't mail it elsewhere but you can also you'll also be able to download the thing as a pdf and so everyone and their dog has a lead magnet that's a pdf if you just print the pdf and mail it you have something different instantly so that's really uh what the client cloning kit is so kevin someone can go to your site clientclonesystems.com there it says there they can click on it 
So if they sign up where we send your free kit, do they get the PDF version or they get the, um, the email version? How do you, yeah. oh, you do. So how, yeah. I was thinking, how do you I'm decide if you're going to send them a physical? I mean, this costs you real dollars. How oh, do you sign right. whether you're going to send them it Well, there or are not? some qualifications. That's a very good question. You have to have a real business with a website. And a lot of people surprisingly don't. They don't have a website. So in my book, you don't have a business. When you have a business and a website, then I'm happy to help you. And if you, you know, if you live in Pakistan or, or Guam, um, well, Guam's a U.S. territory, but, uh, you know, if you live where the U.S. mail can't reach you affordably, you can certainly download the digital version. But uh, as far as my newsletter goes, by the way, that's just people who, who are getting my kit. Um, if I mail you the kit, I like, you can also mail you the newsletter. So that's kind of a hidden thing uh, that people can get by U.S. mail as well. So some of the things in the client cloning kit, there is the paper email, there is a visual USP maker. You'll have to learn more about that. There's That's a cool, client right? cloning script. Um, let's talk about the packaging. Like when you sent self Godin, the, the email, mm-hmm. um, you know, you can send things in an envelope. You chose this to send things in a tube. What are some of the success you've had with sending them in different containers? Um, because that gets it open, right? If it's the best thing sure. in the world and doesn't get open, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, um, two, two things always get open. I'm going to reach around my office here. Uh, this costs 50 cents to send. It's a thank you note, right? Small square envelope with the thing. I have these all next to my desk where I can get them. So this always gets open. Only good news comes in a small square envelope. You don't get a subpoena in a small square envelope, a letter from your ex-wife's attorney. No, it doesn't come in one of these. So this is a party invitation uh, or, a, or a thank you note. It's only good news. So this by itself is a little mental trick. You can get people kind of eagerly opening your message. And that's what I send um, paper emails in much of the time. I can also use a number, to, uh, you know, a, a plain mailing my taxes after this uh, episode so here's my pre-stamped uh, so a number a plain white um number 10 business envelope will also get open but this gets opened with a bit more anticipation the small square envelope and if you can send it something in a different color that's fine too a fun color like you know light green or what have you the other thing that gets open 100 percent of the time is a fedex envelope uh, and so i send these for anything that's really important uh that has to get opened and a little trick of that is um, you can send it three days. It's called FedEx uh, Ground, and that'll get there in three days. It has the same urgency because it's the same letter. You can save a bunch of money. And Who doesn't it. open a FedEx envelope Nobody. and you get it? I mean, you, yeah. you, you open it. It's 100. So, I mean, think of, again, people think, well, email is free. Yeah, email is free. But on a good day, like 20%, 30% of your messages are getting open. And if your message is, you know, at all important, if your unit of sale, your lifetime total value of a client is any good, your economics demand that at some point you send a FedEx letter to people or at the, at the bare minimum, some U.S. mail. So the, uh, the FedEx letter, 100% open rate, I love them. And the thank you note, probably, I don't know, 98%, 99% open rate. The only way they could throw it out is if it's small and gets caught in a pile of mail. But this also has 100% open rate, something in a, in a little tube. And I've actually had people, there's a little, you know, burst as part of the, uh, the label. Some people think it's mildly explosive. They can get, because it, 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 I suppose it does look like a sticky TNT. That was kind of a secondary design consideration. Um, I didn't uh, think of that. But it's no. like one of those Pillsbury dough things that you like twist and it like pops. Right. Yeah. Now that you said that. Yeah, it opens up, Um, but no one's dunked it in a bucket of water to diffuse the thing. But, uh, you know, it's uh, anything you can do to stand out uh, Mm -hmm. without being, you know, too kooky is to your advantage. And so Dan Kennedy has said it's not enough to get open. You know, your your letter has to be opened and read with interest. So there's a lot to that idea. Anything you can do to get it open and read with interest is to your advantage. Yeah. I mean, to your point, Kevin, I, I probably get over 600 emails a day. So if I get something physical, do you get pushback from clients? You know, that you're like, hey, what's this? You know, I, I was watching the one where you help triple someone's pipeline and people, some people are skeptical off the bat. Like, is this mm-hmm. even going to work? 
do you get mm-hmm. pushback from people like, Hey, let's just, or whether it's, you know, Hey, it's less expensive to do this than to send physical things. What kind of objections oh. do you get? Well, a lot of people can't get the mailing or they don't think they can get the mailing addresses of their prospects. You can now almost all the time, especially in the U S it's a bit of a different uh, sport to play in Canada where privacy rules are different, but people are thinking, and it's funny. I'll say, do you have the mailing addresses of these people? And they'll say, sure, I do. I said, with street numbers and zip codes, I said, no, I just have email. I said, I asked for, and I'm not, I don't get crotchety about this, but it's, I, I am asking, do you have the mailing, the physical mailing addresses? The default answer is, yeah, I've got their email. So people think the default address for people is an email address. And we don't live at an email address. We live in a house or condo or what have you. So people have to get off, you know, off track a bit and go, oh yeah, I physically, address. Uh, let me think. Well, no, I don't know. And so, you know, if you're starting your business or if you want to improve your business, the, one of the best things you can do starting today is start collecting the physical addresses of people, especially um, if you sell B2B, because since COVID and a lot of people are working at home, office addresses aren't what they used to be. So, you know, there has been a bit of a challenge, at least in my experience, in reaching people at work because a lot of people aren't at work anymore. My daughter just got a job last year at a major ad agency and she's never been to the office and they actually sold the building. So now there is no office. It's a very, very big company worldwide. They don't have a physical office anymore. So it can be a challenge to get some of your B2B customers uh, where they work. So you want to do anything and everything you can to get their physical addresses. I'll give you a hack right now. Gary Halbert used it on me. If you remember the late great Harry Halbert, for sure. Gary Halbert, he had an email only um, version of his newsletter list. We were getting his emails regularly. And he just said, send me, give me your physical ad- emailing and I'll send you a physical mailing address and I'll send you a really cool report. Well, the report was a sales letter, but any sales letter from Gary Halbert was worth treating like a textbook. So you, you can ask, just ask people, give me your mailing address and I'll send you something special. So if you don't have them now, just try that um, one little question and give them something of value by mail. And then you've got it going forward. And that's going to be a huge asset for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had Bon Halbert on the podcast before when oh, cool. we talked about the boron letters and, and some of the sure. Gary Halbert protégés like Doberman Dan yeah. and um Caleb O'Dowd I, and some of the other people. So I they had a shared talk some. With you go ahead. Dan, one day we spent like an hour uh, at a at a seminar and talking. And I one of his clients, Bill Hyde, is another guy. He's not as well known, but he, Bill Hyde was a protege of Gary Halbert, and he was a client of mine um, for about three, three four years. And uh, the, <laughs> it's too bad Gary's not around. I saw one of his last seminars in person, and it was worth it. It was like five grand for the weekend. Absolutely. What did you, do you remember anything that you took away from that? Yeah, I've got on my, my bookshelf back here. It's in my short list of things, the notes that I took. And if, if, if there's a fire, I'm like grabbing those notes and maybe my passport and not much else. It was incredibly. What was one thing in there? What do you remember? I mean, he was, he was saying um, anything in print is going to be more believable and valuable than what you read online. And he was saying that, you know, and this was a, gosh, 10 plus years ago, but you know, anything that you um, can deliver into people's hands is going to be more believable than what they read online. And of course it was the same print the, the, and the principles that work on offline will also work online in terms of getting response, headlines, offers, lists, et cetera. But just getting people a message either in a newspaper ad or by direct mail is going to increase your response. And it's going to give you higher quality buyers if you can get them offline. That was just one thing that comes to mind. Yeah. So Kevin, I would love to hear any lumpy mail you've sent or received that have been, that, that sticks out to you. Um, mm-hmm. I remember, so any and all thoughts on this. <laughs> um, I remember getting a man crate. I don't know if you've seen those. Someone oh, sent it them. to me and yeah. you have you. And, and so I started sending it to people and it's, hilarious because it's a box and they give you a crowbar. I'm like, how am I supposed to open this thing? It reminded me of your client cloning kit because like, well, how do I get this thing open? And it, you, you know, you just have to work with it. And I was like bleeding from the man crate. Cause I like a splinter <laughs> came out. And like I said, I'm like, thanks for the gift. And I sent a picture of like my bloody arm, but it's definitely memorable. <laughs> so, and you're going to open a man crate. So right. I'd love to hear some ideas, um, things that you've done or have received. Well, one, I've, so I've got 
again back in my little laboratory here one of the things i see the do titans is, binders from titans yeah, there you go the right titans of direct my, response 2016 my spartan, yeah. my spartan uh racing medals yeah the titans you can see that cool yeah. that's uh so i can tell you i got a i got a sword in the mail from uh perry marshall once and that was unusual it came in a big i mean it was a sword it came in a long tube corrugated tube and it was to get uh, to get my uh, interest in his renaissance round table and it was a very cleverly written um letter i, I didn't end up uh, joining but i stuck with perry for a long time i bought several of his his products and services and he also sent me i think a clock in the mail saying you know it's time to get serious i can't recall exactly but that was cool um probably um you know in my experience it's just uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be over the top. This is like the postage on this is through $2 and 20 cents. Now it's probably gone up in the last year or so. But you don't have to break the bank. You just have to break people's patterns by that. I mean, letter, letter, letter to what, you know, I've, so I've broken your pattern. So think in terms, the container can do um, a lot of the selling for you if it's at all relevant. So they yeah, have the man crates are cool because they're sealed with duct tape. You got to find a box cutter or something. Yeah. Well, you could, yeah, you add like 20 bucks and you have them wrap the whole thing in duct tape. Right. You really want to be annoying to someone, but. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've not sealed them in. I think I sent one to my brothers and yeah, I've, I, wanted, I wanted to make life hard for them. So I know I, I think I had those duct tape completely, but in terms of. <laughs> you really love them. Oh yeah. In terms of gifting, um, what I found to be counterintuitive but highly effective is don't send stuff with your own branding. Um, in, in, by intuitive, I mean, if it, you're thinking, well, if I'm paying for these coasters or this set of knives, it's going to say client cloning systems on it. So, Hey, you should be glad Jeremy that display, you know, my swag in your life, but that actually is not the case. I mean, I, I get stuff regularly and I toss it or put it in a drawer. Cause I don't want to, it's just, you know, it, it's just a mental thing, but what I do send and gets great results is I'll, have a knife, for example, engraved with my client's name. And, and you may think, well, how are they going to remember you? Believe me, they're not going to forget who sent them the knife with their name on it. And it's, it's more often the case that you're going to get swag with someone else's branding. But if you take a couple of minutes and have it customized with your prospect, your client's name, it's going to have a huge impact and they're going to keep the thing. Um, so that's, um, I, I do send a lot of boxes and things and the stuff that gets the most um, response in terms of thank yous uh, is the, the, the stuff that's engraved and personalized for the client, not from me. Kevin, we were talking before we hit record about what has led to your biggest winners, right? And yeah. you were saying how writing a promotion and how you think about writing a promotion. So I'd love for you to dig into sure. that. So I, it's got two parts. It's real, real simple. I uh, have found over the years that people will take action more quickly um, to avoid pain than to obtain gain. In other words, you'll run faster from a burning house uh, than you will toward a bowl of ice cream. So it's not enough to say, hey, I can double your sales. It's, hey, uh, are you in danger of going out of business? Or, hey, you know, are people leaving your company because you can't make payroll? So it's the same principle. I'm going to increase your sales. But on the one hand, I'm going to stop this awful thing from happening to you. And then the other, I'm just going to make your life better. And we all have hedonic adaptation. We get used to good things, no matter how good they are. But, um, and that's just human nature. It's also human nature to just pull your hand out of the fire and avoid pain. And it's just, it's a faster reaction. It's more uh, visceral, emotional, less logical. It's all going to help you make the sale faster. If you position your product or service as just pushing an emotional hot button, and, um, and helping people avoid pain. That little lesson took me way longer to learn than I would like to admit. But one, I, I can still remember one of the best responded to postings that on, on LinkedIn is a picture of this, um, this uh, poster for motorcycle safety. And instead of saying, you know, think before you drink and drive or ride safely, it's like, hey, and I'm paraphrasing. Hey, uh, and it shows this smirking guy sitting on a really nice bike. He goes, you ride you die, your best friend, your wife's best friend gets your bike, you know, bummer. And if you think about it, wow, I don't want my wife to get, you know, I don't, I don't want to 
dying is like way down on the list. It's like, I don't want my wife to start going out with another guy and he gets my bike. Ah, and so that's got a much better reaction than, hey, you should not drive drunk on your motorcycle. So think about that, right? That's avoiding a huge pain. And, and a lot of the thing about that is you don't want to admit that. That's a hidden desire. So we can go deep into how do you find out what the pain is? That's a really deep hidden desire. Nobody's going to admit to the fact that they're more concerned about their wife riding around on their bike with another guy than they are about dying or about running over some kindergartners, you know, but that is the fact, you know? So that was a, that got a huge response. People were going, Oh my gosh, this, you know, so I got a lot of response and comments on that. And it's just a great example of how you can use a really negative emotional hot button and push that hot button and get response from people. So that's principle one is to just use, you know, and, and, and you may think it's unethical. No, I mean, if what you're selling is, is good and your service is good, or you're a good person delivering good things. What do you care how you get people to buy from you? You know, you're not uh, being an evil person. You're just shortening the sales cycle. You're getting people to think less and act more quickly. And again, if what you're doing is, is a good thing, then ultimately is a good thing to use these negative emotional hot buttons to get a faster response. The second principle is to use the language of your market as literally as possible. So we can talk about, you know, this letter in a minute, which is what helped my client get to $100 million. I wrote it in the language of the market. By that, I mean, I was looking at um, blog articles, more importantly, comments on blog articles, which is where you can find some actual language of your market. Now, we, were, we did research with customers and they were just talking. A lot of good copywriting is really transcription, where I'm just transcribing what the client or their clients are saying about the product or service. So again, I'm listening. Uh, I'm not inventing any of this language. I'm transcribing it. I'm finding it um, with blog comments are great. Focus groups to an extent can be good in terms of just the language that you're hearing. Uh, but writing it in the language of the market. Now, this is a big sideways journey here, a sidebar. If you're in Chicago and you like hockey, as you probably should, if you're a man over the age of about 40, the greatest hockey movie ever is called Slapshot. I've seen it for sure. Okay, I've seen it like a hundred times. You know, right? the taped gla I picture the taped glasses oh, yeah, you know, they, in the middle. Yeah, that, Slapshot, that's what I picture when I picture Slapshot. Slapshot, the screenplay was written by a woman. Uh, not to be sexist, but she had never played hockey to the level that these guys did. How did she write that brilliant screenplay? Well, actually, she had her brother who played hockey sneak a tape recorder into the locker rooms. And there's like, I guess, dozens or hundreds of hours of locker room talk. And so all that stuff you see and hear in the movie, it's based on stuff that actual, you know, bonehead hockey players were saying. And, and she was, in a sense, transcribing. And so that brilliant screenplay was, in a large part, transcribed and so that's my biggest winners have in a sense been transcribed just like that for example when i interview a client i i record the call and transcribe it and um now again we, we can go on and on about that but so you're not trying to invent language whole cloth you're you can get a good sales letter just by looking at your testimonials and getting a sense for why people are happy what language are they using it's going to be different from what you were thinking and saying almost certainly because you are not your market. You are not your clients. So anytime you can think in terms of transcribing the copy, one of the best copywriters who ever lived, Eugene Schwartz said, uh, copy is not written. It is assembled. And so another way to look at great copy is you're assembling the part. They're like little Legos. And so I'll, 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 and so I, I'll print out a transcript of an interview with a client and I'll just start circling things. And that's a headline. Whoa. You know, the client may say the best headline that we can possibly come up with. I don't care where it comes from. Um, so if it, so the, the two parts of my process are, you know, solve a, a pain used by pushing emotional hot buttons and do it in the language of the market. And so I talked briefly about comments on blog posts, for example, I wrote an email promotion about 10 years ago. Um, and the guy was really skeptical about working with me. He, he said, you know, I get like three to five responses a week from this list that I rent. It was from the chamber of commerce or something. And he was selling destination weddings, uh, you know, to Tahiti and wherever. And so he, he and I were both, you know, men in our forties. 
and the target market was women in their 20s and 30s so kind of a mismatch and so he had been writing and he maybe had interviewed his wife helped his you know maybe his wife had helped with some of those emails but he wasn't speaking their language and uh, and i wasn't a uh, natural for doing that either so what i did was i went out and started uh, reading blog posts about planning a wedding because part of his service was they would help you plan the wedding the destination wedding it's pretty cool and so all right this is interesting so i was compiling all these tips and problems to avoid when planning a wedding but the real um value the real gold nuggets were found in the blog comments so this is when someone comments on a blog that is your market talking if they're talking about an issue that you're trying to address that's the language of the market so i was looking at these uh, and it's a lot of exclamation points and i remember one of the comments i got was you know nobody in all capital letters nobody understands what it's like to be the bride they just think you have time for all this they don't know how messed up your life is i'm paraphrasing but it was i never would have thought to write that but it was and, it, and they got like a bunch of upvotes or whatever it and jumped so out at you as a good headline that ended up being in the middle of the email promotion right near the top actually to get credibility and bam we sold the first time he sent it out over thirty thousand dollars in trips Two of them were to exotic locations. So it was a complete bullseye. And he was, he, he got like 30 responses instead of three, four, or five. And it's, you know, I wasn't, I mean, my method was pretty cool, but I was pulling brilliance out of the market. I wrote the email in the language of the market using actual language. So, so today you can go to reddit.com and there's a, a little subreddit on anything and everything you can possibly think of. That's your market talking to you. I think one of the most valuable exercises you could do short of watching more of Jeremy's podcast there is you to go. go over to Reddit. Yes, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, no money was received for that, for that plug. Go to Reddit and find a subreddit on your market. There's one for everyone. And look at the comments. There's your language to start thinking about and to possibly use. There could be some headlines for you. And if you combine that with any testimonials that you've got, things on your LinkedIn profile, your recommendations, you should have some. Uh, the testimonials you've been using over the years, go back and review them with an eye towards pulling the language out. Uh, a really cool thing you can do, actually, I don't know, there's a lot of ways to do this online. Go, just Google a free word cloud maker or free word cloud. And I did this for a client recently. He had like 63 testimonials. So I was excited about that. But then I realized this is kind of overwhelming, even for me, I'm a glutton for research. So I took all 63 testimonials, copied and pasted them into an Excel spreadsheet, then copied and pasted those into this word cloud generator. And I sent it to him and I said, you know, here is uh, your market literally talking in one of the big words was like training and another big word was sales. But some of the smaller words were like, you know, pipeline and revenue. And I thought, you know, here are, here's the exact emphasis of what people are saying about you. Have you ever seen anything like this? He was like, no, no, no. So it's really insightful to make a word cloud if you've got enough of them. Um, you take your Google reviews, your testimonials, and create a word cloud and print it and have it next to your monitor. And that's a really cool way to, well, here, so it'll show you, it's a snapshot. Here's what people think of my business now. Now, if you're not happy with that, how could you change? What words would you like to make bigger and smaller? start um, you know, delivering more in those areas. But keep in mind, you can't change what people are saying about you now. You gotta kind of ride that horse in the direction it's going. So just be aware that people are thinking and saying these things about you. So that's where you are now. You can certainly go in different directions, but you know, anything you can do to listen to your customers, your clients, to use their language to sell what you're selling is gonna um, be to your advantage. Yep. Kevin, that's golden. Thanks for sharing that. And I, I don't know if Perry Marshall came up with it, but I remember him saying, is this a bleeding neck problem, <laughs> right? And that's what you're talking about. It's like, how do you get this person to avoid pain? They're going to take immediate action. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just from, the, 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 the question to ask yourself is, you know, if your house is on fire, which direction should you run? And you're going to think north, south. No, the answer is away. Just run away from the house fire. And so, cause you're not thinking. And so that's ultimately the kind of mood you want to put people in. They just want to get away from this problem. If you really want to see how this is done, 
um, you know, read a political fundraising letter or email because the, the first two or three paragraphs are designed to put you in a frenzy of, uh, of anger and angst and anxiety. And ah, so after you've read like the top half of page one of a, of a political fundraising letter and you find yourself vibrating physically, that means, you know, it's working. Someone is pushing your hot buttons. And so the rest of that letter is going to be designed to extract money from you. And, you know, don't be angry that I'm telling you this. Don't hate it. It's just a fact. So you can use this idea or ignore it. But again, as long as you're an ethical person selling an ethical product or service, uh, you ought to consider this method. Use it for good, not evil. Um, Kevin, and I want to dig in about the $100 million with direct mail. But before we do, I just want to, I don't want to gloss over. You said something that I want to dig a little bit deeper, which is the hidden desire, right? Mm -hmm. And what are some ways that you think about or, you know, because that most people wouldn't say, I'm going to put a motorcycle ad and then talk about the, you know, the best friend who's going to inherit the mic, you know, the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. How do you think about or do you have a process for digging into the hidden desire That's of a, a market? Good question. And I'm embarrassed. It was either Joe Sugarman um, or another fella, darn, darn, darn. But, you know, this is not my idea. The hidden desire is an old idea, and it was given to me. The way I find it is to ask the question why right after each one, about five, six times. You'll eventually get to the bottom. So, so Jeremy, you should ride safe on your motorcycle. Why? So you don't die. Why? Well, so your wife isn't left mourning, you know, your loss. Why? Well, so she doesn't start taking an interest in other men. I mean, it's natural, but you know, hey, that that would that's not the best outcome for you. Why don't you want her to marry another guy? Well, she's gonna give your prize possession, you know, to that guy and he's gonna be riding around in your bike. Can you picture that? And at that point, we've probably found enough of a hidden desire because when you really start going, ah, you know, when you find yourself gritting your teeth. Or just you don't even want you want to you know you put your hand over your eyes. At that point, you've probably found the base desire, the hidden desire. Um, so just keep asking why until you can't go any further, and then you've reached the hidden desire. So let's talk about the hundred million dollar with the direct mail. By all means, sure. So this was um, written about uh, nine ten years ago for uh, my client uh, who had a chain of pet stores. He had nine at the time we started. He ended up with 31 uh, about two and a half years later when we finished. So this was, um, this breaks several rules in, in, in terms, I mean, it doesn't break a rule, but it's not the prettiest thing. It's a self mailer. Yeah. So it arrives like this and it opens up it's four pages of copy, actually three, uh, because really the, the front page here is mostly headline. But what we're doing here that I can just tell you, you don't have to see any, I'll go through parts of it. But what we have here is a really good uh, offer we were mailing. Here's the offer. I hope this is not backwards. No, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. So if you're watching, if you're listening to it, check out the video. You see yeah, free, I'll read you the headline. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Free $21 gift card for you and your dog. That's the headline. And then the subhead is how to make sure your friend lives a long and happy life. And the offer had uh, actually three parts. There was a gift card. There was a body score assessment of your dog when you bring it into the store. And then a free report, the Healthy Pet Toolkit. So we had a really good offer. He tested that and I actually helped him improve it a bit. So our offer is, is, is really good. Um, second, and probably even more important, it was the list. So we were mailing this to a list of subscribers to Dog Fancy Magazine. This took a, we were working with Craig Simpson who's a, probably the best mailing mm -hmm. list consultant in America. I've and had Craig him on us. Yeah, the podcast. Yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. He's great. He's a uh, tremendous. So Craig helped us find this list of subscribers to dog fancy magazine. These are people who fit our demographic. And then third was the copy in, in my estimation, if you get the list and the offer, right. Those are the first two in order of importance. The copy um, is kind of going to take care of itself. So here it is, and I'll just read selected parts, but actually the, um, so I, I got into the head of dog buyers very, very well. It helped that I was a dog owner at the time. My dog has since passed away, but I Sorry to am yeah. this market. Most of his best clients were actually female, but apart from that, I was the market. And if you're not the market, you can do what I did earlier, read the blogs, <clears throat> read the comments, but I was the market. So this was very easy for me. But again, you can get there with some research. 
I didn't say how to make sure your dog lives a long and happy life. I said how to make sure your friend lives a long and happy life. A dog's best friend. Yeah, your 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 dog's not your a pet. Your dog is a friend. I used to refer to my dog Ginger as my little best friend. Never my dog. It's just a salutation at the beginning. It says, dear dog parent. So I'm starting off just uh, addressing people where they are from one peer to another. Um, and I had Steve's picture at the beginning. Steve Adams is the client. Uh, I know Steve well, and uh, he's been on the podcast too. He's a I great guy. I love Steve. Steve is still a client. We've yeah. been working together for over a decade. Um, I want to get to the part where where we're pushing emotional hot buttons, you know, negative ones. Again, I'm a dog owner trying to help other dog owners. So I had no compunctions about sharing these negatives. I said, here's some unsettling facts about busy dog owners. Uh, One, only 38% of people understand all the ingredients on dog food labels. And two, only 44% of dog owners really know what their pets are eating. So that is in fact, you know, that's unsettling stuff. And the rest of this letter is basically helping you avoid those problems. But one of the best sections was from some research that I had done, and it was actually hard to avoid at the time. It said, you may have seen those tragic news stories about dogs poisoned by contaminated food. It's a harsh reminder of how things can go wrong and how much your dog is depending on you to make the right decisions. So at the time this was written, there was a big scare about pet food from China that was contaminated by like radiator for antifreeze. It was just awful. And, And dogs were dying. So yeah, I was pushing some emotional hot buttons there. And this is not your typical pet food promotion. If you haven't figured this out by now, this is, you know, different. It's actually the pet store, not pet food. Uh, Another couple of things that were important here were wherever state we mailed this to, we would lead with a testimonial from that state. So this one Mm -hmm. went to Alabama and the very first testimonial was from Alabama. People always want to see themselves in your testimonial. So anything you can do to connect with them, if you're selling to um, right-handed men who live in Peoria, Illinois, and your, your testimonial number one is from Dr. Jeremy from Peoria, Illinois, right-handed pitcher, you know, whatever. Hey, that's me. So anytime people can see themselves in your testimonial, it's going to connect with them better. And we had a really nice um, endorsement from a veterinarian, which is in this green box. So lots of credibility. Uh, just, you know, we had everything we were hitting on all cylinders here. And then, uh, you know, because I do direct response, here's a coupon at the end. You just can't miss this. And we got a lot of response in this. Eventually the ROI after a few mailings was a thousand percent, which meant for every 5,000, he was investing in mailings. He was getting back $50,000 in revenue. So that's how you grow to hundred million dollars. And I was not the sole reason, believe me, uh, he would have gotten that big eventually without me because Steve's a tremendous entrepreneur. His company was outstanding, but we got to $100 million uh, using direct mail that delivered a, a, an ROI of 1,000%. I think Warren Buffett's lifetime ROI average is maybe 32% a year, something like that. I'm not making fun of Warren Buffett, but I mean, in, if you do your direct response marketing correctly, you can get some outrageous ROIs. And so that's how we did it uh, with Steve Adams. And so this mailed for uh, three, four, five years. I can't recall it. It had a different iterations, but it mailed for at least three years nationwide. And we hit it out of the park with some research. But again, the big three, if you're, um, in, if you want to boil this down in order of importance, and you'll hear this from every direct response copywriter who, who knows what they're doing. Number one is the list. Who are you addressing? Number two is the offer. What do you want to give them in return for their time or their money? And number three is the copy, the creative the promotion itself, all the other stuff. But if, if you get the, the list and the offer right, the rest of it is much easier to do. Yeah, I think, Kevin, it was in an interview with one of the Gary Helbert protégés who was saying Gary was peppering them with questions and uh, about what's the most important thing. And, and uh, I think he said it was a starving crowd, which is the list yeah. of what you're talking about. Yeah, if you want to open a hamburger stand, what's the most important success factor? And yeah, that until people started hearing that line and were not playing along with them at his seminars, you know, he was making people look rather foolish. Oh, it's the recipe. No, it's uh, it's the quality of the beef. It's our location, location, location. He said, no, what you want before you open a hamburger stand is a starving crowd. And so, yeah, that's the list. That's the list. Kevin, first of all, I have one last question, but thank you. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. This has been just spitting out gold nuggets for people. That is 
actionable, tactical, but strat, you know, strategic as well. Um, I want to point people to clientcloningsystems.com. I encourage anyone to go check out his client cloning kit um, and his newsletter and anywhere you could sign up for Kevin's thing. I get his newsletter in the mail. I open it. I read it, um, you know, every single word of it. So um, ideal client for you, Kevin, like who should be working with you? Who's ideal for you? There are two ways that I can work with people. I'm actually coming out with a beta version of the client cloning system singular, which is all of these ideas boiled down into just a couple letters. Uh, and it, with instructions for how to do your, your own direct mail and email and make the phone call follow-ups as well. The client cloning system is in beta right now. It's not formally advertised, but if you um, request my client cloning kit, you will be notified. So that's if your business is doing less than about $2 million, the client cloning system is for you. And it's in beta now, very affordable. Um, just download my client cloning kit and I'll, I'll tell you more. If your business is between two and, tw and 20 million, let's say, I can definitely work with you to, to give you a really nice ROI. You can visit my website and there's a link where you can click on um, to learn how to work with me. Just request a pre-discovery session. I'm curious while you, um, for other types of businesses that are best that you prefer to work with uh, certain genres or categories. It's usually people selling a high trust product or service. Um, and usually it's a high ticket product or service as well. Steve Adams, he had a high end uh, chain of pet stores, for example. It wasn't bargain basement stuff. So if you're selling a high trust product or service and you're doing two to $20 million in revenue and you know your marketing is good already because I can't multiply zeros. If, you're, if your marketing is good and you want it to be great and you're doing two to 20 million in revenue, um, typically, if you're in the U.S., but I also work with clients in Canada, we can definitely work together one-on-one. -on -one. You can still learn more on my website, clientclonesystems.com. But uh, below those revenue numbers, you should definitely uh, request my free client cloning kit as long as you have a, you know, a website and a going business. And then I'll uh, let you know how you can become a beta tester and get hold of the client cloning system, which is a do-it-yourself product. Cool. Kevin, thank you. Everyone go to clientclonesystems.com. Check out more, check out more episodes of the podcast, check out Rise 25. And Kevin, thanks so much. Thank you, Jeremy. My pleasure. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nice like a beach if you find the sailing right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.